Today we're talking about how you can do more with your smart home automations through something called conditions. Now in the past, creating HomeKit automations, especially if you wanna create more advanced conditional automations, was pretty limiting and somewhat cumbersome in the Apple Home app, but there was a recent update to iOS 18 that has really improved this. We can convert our home automations to a shortcut and now create better conditional automations in the Home app, utilizing multiple conditions better than ever before. So let's talk about it. I'm gonna show you how to do it. We'll discuss this update and why you might wanna utilize this feature to level up your smart home automations. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? My name is Shane and this channel is all about helping you build an easy Apple home, smart home with new videos and live streams every week. Utilizing automations in your smart home is where the power is. Turn on the porch lights at sunset, turn off your wife's hair straightener when she leaves the house automatically so you don't burn down the house. <laughs> These automations have two main parts, a trigger and an action but adding conditions to your automations will take them to a whole new level. A condition is an added element between the trigger and the final action that must be true in order for the automation to run. For example, at sunset, only when I am home, turn on the porch light. In that example, I'm using my location as the condition. The automation to turn on the porch light at sunset will only happen if I am home. Now, when creating an automation in HomeKit, we have a few basic options that can be used as a condition. You can choose time of day or location when creating an automation, but if you wanted to use other things as a condition, maybe the status of another smart home device, the day of the week, the temperature outside, for example, you need to convert your automation to a shortcut. This then becomes your action, and we can add more advanced scripting here to include multiple conditions. Now in the past, if you wanted to create multiple conditions in the home app, most people would nest multiple if actions. And this worked, it's not typically great programming practice and often leads to cluttered and messy scripting and automations. That's why I'm excited to share that Apple has now given us the ability to utilize multiple conditions within an if action in iOS 18. I don't think a lot of people realize this is now an option or maybe understand how this can be used. So let's cover some very basic examples of this today and hopefully it'll give you some ideas for how you can level up your automations with conditions. Now basic home automation would be when a motion sensor detects motion, turn on a light. But let's say I don't want that light to come on if it's not dark in the room, or maybe if someone is watching TV. We'll add these conditions to the automation so that it only runs if the light in the room is below a certain threshold and if the TV is currently off. All right, so let's go ahead and build this automation from scratch and just show you how it works. So if I open up the home app, go to your automations tab, and we'll just create a new automation, add automation. And we're gonna start when uh, motion is detected, right? So when motion det is detected, we're gonna turn on the light, but then we're gonna add some conditions to make it a little bit more uh, dynamic and useful for us. Don't wanna upset the wife or family members if they're watching TV or something like that. So. We'll choose a sensor detect something and we'll find our sensor. This is gonna be your trigger. I'm looking for the living room. All right, and here I've got an Eve occupancy sensor and I'm gonna use this uh, to detect motion, okay? So that's actually one of these right here. This is the Eve motion. So when the sensor detects occupancy, and see here's what I was talking about is some built-in conditions you can do in the home app easily. You can do time or when certain people are home or when nobody's home, stuff like that. Uh, but we wanna do more than that. So we'll just go ahead and tap next. And here's where you would normally choose your light. So I could go ahead and choose my light, but instead I'm gonna go ahead and go all the way down and we're looking for this right here, convert to shortcut tap convert to shortcut, and now we can add our scripting, right? So if action is where you're gonna be able to add these conditions and kind of get more out of your scripting here. So first we're gonna say, if the light level is below a certain point. Now we can keep this here. We're gonna actually use this um, set scenes and accessories action here in a minute, but we'll leave it for now. 
So we're gonna go here and we're gonna tap the condition and we're gonna look for our home and the accessories in our home. So here you can use any of your other smart devices as a condition, right? So whether a TV's on or off and uh, different sensors and stuff like that. So we're gonna go back to the living room and I'm actually gonna use that same motion sensor. This motion sensor right here has a light sensor built in. All right, so we're gonna be able to utilize that in our automation as a condition. So if the EVE light sensor current light level is, and you can choose the number, I actually wanna change this right here is, and I want this to be less than, and here you can put your light level that you want it to be less than. So I'm gonna do less than 10 lux. That means the room is gonna be pretty dark. That's, uh, that's what we want here. Tap done. Now in the past, if you wanted to add multiple conditions here in the home app, uh, doing these shortcuts, you would have had to add another if action and kind of nest them within each other and stuff. And it just got real messy. With iOS 18, we now can add multiple conditions within the same if action without having to nest uh, multiple ifs together, which is really great. You see this little plus icon that we have here now. Uh, so that's pretty new to iOS 18. If we tap that, we can see we can now add an additional condition right here. So that's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna go back to uh, the accessories in my home. And now we're gonna look for that TV, okay? So I actually have a home kit TV in the living room. So I'm just gonna use that as another condition. Uh, right here is the Sony TV. And now you can see right here, the Sony TV, I'm gonna change the attribute to active. So if the Sony TV is, we'll leave is, and we're gonna tap off. Okay, so now I've got these multiple conditions here. Uh, if right now it says if any are true, if the light sensor level, if the light level is less than 10 lux, or if the Sony TV is off. I actually want both of these, I want it to require both of these, so I'm gonna tap this, choose all. That's another new addition here uh, to our if actions, but we'll come back to that. So right now it says if all of these are true, it will follow through uh, and continue on with our automation. So now we just need to tell it what to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this that we had up here. I'm gonna pull this down underneath and we're gonna set our scene and this is just the light that we wanna control. I'll go back to my living room. This bedroom hall light right here. We're just gonna use this bedroom hall light right here. It's near the living room. Okay, and I want this to turn on. So we'll tap that and make sure it comes on. I can also adjust the brightness level here because this is actually a dimmer. So I'll maybe put it at like around 50% or so. All right, done. Now that's really it. So you can see, um, again, if you've ever done this before in the past, our if actions are a lot more dynamic now with the ability to add multiple conditions all here. And you can see I can even add more like this. You can add more and more conditions here, which is really great. So I'm gonna leave it like that. I can actually delete otherwise because I don't need that. And our shortcut, uh, our scripting is just a lot more clean and neat and just makes a lot more sense uh, thanks to these updates. Now we could stop there, but if you also want to turn the light off after maybe a few minutes or a few seconds or something, you could add a wait action. We'll do that and we'll say, let's just wait for like 90 seconds and then turn the light off. I will look for my wait action. I'm gonna pull this up under here. We want this to all fall within that if action here. So this is all only gonna happen if these conditions are met. We'll just do like 90 seconds. Okay and then we're gonna turn the light off. And you can actually duplicate actions by tapping this, tap duplicate, and I just duplicated that one with the bedroom hall light. I'm gonna pull it under here, and we wanna change this to make sure it turns off. So now this automation will kick off every time this EVE motion sensor detects motion, but it will only continue to turn on the light if the built-in light sensor detects low light and the TV is off. That way it'll only happen if the room is dark and we're not in there watching TV. Again, you don't wanna interrupt somebody watching TV with the lights coming on. So this will work great. Now, as I mentioned earlier, another one of the great updates with the if actions in iOS 18 is that you can not only choose multiple conditions, but you can choose to require any of the conditions or all of the conditions in your if action in order to complete the automation. Now again, in this example, all of the conditions are required, meaning that the light level must be low and the TV must be off 
in order to run this. Now we'll do an example using any conditions next. But first, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Eve. You've already seen one of their products here in this video, that Eve motion sensor. It's a matter over thread indoor outdoor motion sensor with that built in light sensor that you can utilize in your automations, just as we've done in this video. Eve also sells a number of other great smart home products, including my favorite smart plug, the Eve Energy. It also supports matter over thread. These smart plugs are great for your Christmas decorations. I use a bunch of these so I can make the garland, the Christmas trees, even my little Santa smart during the holidays. And now I can control everything with turn Santa on. The Eve Energy Outlet is another great product. Combine the Eve Energy Smart Plug or the Smart Outlet with the Eve Motion to create some awesome automations. Eve also sells an indoor camera and an outdoor camera. Maybe you could use one of these to catch the big guy coming down the chimney this year. Use code SHANE30 to get 30% off select Eve devices at the Eve store through the entire month of December. Could also make for some great Christmas gifts for the smart home tech enthusiasts in your life. If you want them to arrive by Christmas though, be sure to place your order by December 16th. More details and that discount code are below. Click the link in the description to see all of the Eve products and deals this holiday season. Now another really useful condition to add to your automations is a guest switch um, for like a guest mode. This can be done with a virtual switch if you have something that allows you to create one like Homebridge or Home Assistant, or you can just use an actual smart plug like the Eve Energy. Call the switch guest mode, that's what I do. And when you have guests over, and maybe you, know, you don't want your usual automations to run, you can add that guest mode switch to your automations to ensure that the switch is off. And that way when you have guests over, just turn on the guest mode to skip your automations for that night since that'll be one of the conditions to run your automations. All right, so for example, I have this automation here uh, that says every night at 10 p.m. turn the patio string lights off. Just a really simple automation. Let's say I have guests over out there or maybe every now and then I'm actually out there pretty late you know, grilling something. So I actually wanna add some conditions that says if there's no motion back there or um, if that guest mode switch is off. That way, if I have guests over or I'm actually out there, it won't turn off my patio string lights that night. It'll skip the automation. All right, so to do that uh, from here, this is an automation that we've already have built. So normally you would, um, you could go select accessories and scenes and this is where uh, we currently have the patio string lights chosen. But instead, I'm gonna go down here and choose convert to shortcut. You can see it already added that since we had that selected. And I'm gonna once again add our if action. And right here, we're gonna say if, we're gonna choose an accessory as a condition. And again, these work outdoors. These are outdoor rated. So I've got one of these on the back porch. If the Eve occupancy sensor, occupancy, is detected so uh, that's our condition right there and then again we can add additional conditions here may i actually have another sensor out there because uh, i have a camera back there so i can even add additional motion sensors back there so let's go and do that i've got one this is in a different place on the back porch so i can say if the tp link camera that's back there also, if motion is detected, so that way I've got, it's basically checking for two motion sensors. And I actually wanna change this to no. Uh, and change this to motion is not detected, okay? Now we also wanna add that guest mode switch. So add one more condition. Let's see. I have that guest mode switch is in my living room right here, done. So if, Motion is not detected here, it's not detected here, and guest mode is off. So what I'm gonna do for this one is, if any of these are true, um, I wanna stop the shortcut. So a way you can do that is you can look for stop. Yeah, stop this shortcut. Okay, I'm gonna pull this up here. So it's gonna check and it's gonna see if um, motion is here. I'm gonna put yes. 
if motion is detected here or if guess mode is on. So if any of these are true, it's gonna stop the shortcut. Otherwise, we're gonna turn off those back porch string lights, okay? And this is where the any comes in handy versus all. So in this example, if any of these are true, it's gonna stop the shortcut and it's not gonna run any further and it's not gonna get to this part here. But if it goes through and it checks, okay, there's no motion back here, it'll continue. No motion here, it'll continue. And if guest mode is off, it will continue and it will go to the next part where it says otherwise and turn off the back porch lights. To recap, this now says every night at 10 p.m. it's gonna run this shortcut. And it says if there is any motion or if guest mode is on, it's gonna stop the shortcut or the automation. Otherwise, it's gonna turn off those lights. Now this concept works really well in various ways using like a guest mode. You can create vacation mode switches or a babysitter switch, etc. You get the idea. Simply add these to your automations as an additional condition to easily bypass or skip your automation that you would normally run. So I think this little update to HomeKit shortcuts was a really good one, or shortcuts in general, you use the same concept in your regular shortcuts. If you've had a lot of if actions nested together, you can now streamline those automations and make them a lot cleaner. And if you haven't used conditions in your automations yet, now would be a great time to try them out. Use conditions to build more robust HomeKit automations and make that smart home just a little bit smarter. Drop a comment below and share your automation ideas if you also are utilizing conditions in your smart home automations. It would be great to see and share ideas with each other. If you got something out of this video, hit the like button and subscribe for more smart home content just like this and live streams every week. Thanks again to Eve for sponsoring today's video. Again, check out that link and discount code in the description to save some money on Eve products this holiday season. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.